The Leyden frost effect can be seen when you add droplets of water to an extremely hot metal pan. Water remains as a droplet and fizzes around the surface of the pan before disappearing. So what's actually happening here to cause this effect? And whilst this process is most often observed with water, it also happens to other liquids when they're on surfaces which are far hotter than their boiling point. It's first described in detail by a German doctor and professor called Johann Liedenfrost in 1756, but others had been noticing the effect occurring before then. For it to occur, the liquid needs to form a droplet on the surface on which it's on top of that needs to be substantially hotter than the liquid's boiling point and also remain at that temperature as it heats the liquid. A droplet of water is an almost perfect sphere due to the action of surface tension. It acts like a skin on the water, trying to pull in to cover the smallest area possible results in a sphere being formed. This represents the largest ratio of volume of water contained compared to the surface area of the droplet. Surface tension, however, is a rather weak force. Almost any impact on the skin of the water is sufficient in normal circumstances to actually break the skin. The key to understanding how the droplet retains its form on a hot surface is that the droplet never truly actually touches the surface. Instead, what happens is the water at the bottom of the droplet is rapidly heated past its boiling point. This results in the water there turning to steam. That steam is then released from the base of the droplet, expands very rapidly, and the rest of the droplet is actually resting on this cushion of steam. Now, over time, steam escapes from the sides of the droplet. However, because the surface is far hotter than the boiling point of water, more steam is being produced from the bottom of the droplet that continues to hover. So as more and more water is evaporating, the droplet shrinks in size until it's completely vaporised. However, because the surface is unlikely to be perfectly flat or even evenly heated, drops of water are also not going to be producing steam in an absolutely perfectly symmetrical fashion around the droplet. The side of the droplet produces fractionally more steam, experience a greater force than the rest of the droplet, so will push the droplet across the surface a kind of steam propelled balloon, hence why the droplets skitter across the surface. Now, whilst the leading frost effect is a fascinating one, it does have little practical use. But there are thoughts that can be used to enhance the action of fire suppressors or even in biofuel production.